What do you say? You want to go for it? Okay, I'll start. Hey, everybody. Are you ready for some good news? How is that? Is that okay? First up, engineers at Georgia Tech have built a four-cycle engine that produces hydrogen from methane. The engine is called the CHAMP reactor, CHAMP being an acronym for CO2 slash H2 active membrane piston. It operates in much the same way as a four-cycle internal combustion engine, only instead of igniting combustible fuel in the cylinder, it mixes methane and steam with a catalyst that produces hydrogen and a byproduct of carbon dioxide, which is captured automatically by a sorbent also present in the cylinder. The Georgia Tech team believes their design could be scaled up or down for a variety of uses. It could allow for the production of commercially viable hydrogen-fueled automobiles without the need for a new infrastructure to distribute and store hydrogen, since the necessary hydrogen would be produced on site by the CHAMP reactor using natural gas, which is already widely distributed. The paper on the CHAMP reactor is published in the journal Industrial and Engineering Chemistry Research. Next up, engineers at Michigan State University have invented a stretchable integrated circuit that can be made using an inkjet printer. The circuits are made from electronic inks, which are essentially solutions of nanomaterials. The inks are used to create an elastic smart fabric containing the circuits. This fabric can be folded without damaging the circuits, which is a step up from the current generation of flexible electronics. Though very impressive, the MSU engineers stress that more work is needed before their flexible smart fabric is ready for consumers. But if and when that is, this technology could be game-changing. Because it can be inexpensively manufactured, it could lead to things like thin, flexible tablets and video displays as big as a wall, but no thicker than wall paper. The paper on this ink-fabricated stretchable circuitry is published in the journal ACS Nano. And finally, speaking of printable technology, researchers at the University of Toronto have achieved a crucial breakthrough in the development of printable solar cells. The U of T team is working on a new class of solar cells known as perovskite cells. These perovskite cells would be inexpensive and produced by printing, which would make it possible to transform any surface into a solar power generator. The major obstacle in the development of this technology has been finding a way to make a crucial component of the solar cell called the electron selective layer, or ESL that would be compatible with the rest of the perovskite design. The U of T researchers may have found a way around this obstacle by creating an ESL consisting of nanoparticles suspended in solution, which are bound to the perovskite layer with a coating of chlorine atoms. This process doesn't require the high temperatures needed to make ESLs by conventional methods, and perovskite cells made using this process by the E of U team demonstrated efficiency comparable to silicon solar cells, and retained that efficiency much longer than perovskite cells made using other methods. This research is published in the journal Science. A new kind of four-stroke engine produces hydrogen from methane, a stretchable integrated circuit could lead to a new generation of flexible, wearable electronics, and a breakthrough in manufacturing could pave the way for printable solar cells. That's the good news. Hey, where'd you go? Adi, where'd you go? Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also, please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Steve Shives to become a patron. Thanks for watching. I mean, who needs that cat anyway? You guys watch these videos to see me, right? Adi? Adi, where'd you go, baby? <laughs>